So we got a little bit of a uh, supportal combat. Uh, a little bit of uh, the battle of the proletariat. There we go. That's what we're mm. looking for uh, on the other side of the map. But uh, it's not going to be all that much. The question, though, does Clem take his natural on the low ground? And ooh, second gas before a natural. You were talking about Byun doing this, and we didn't see that much from him. But uh, Clem, a little bit higher tech to start this game one. Yeah, so this is very indicative of the fact that it's probably going to be a factory before the expansion. Uh, this does mean that you, hey, you get out a faster Cyclone. You can especially put on a little bit more pressure to your opponent. You get out a faster Medivac can lead into some uh, faster Widow Mine drops, is what we've seen some players use this for. So, definitely going to be interesting to see. There's a lot of options here for Clem and how he can end up using this, but it does mean that that command center will be, be, will be put down just a little bit later. And oh, look at Hero. I mean, I imagine this is for a proxy Stargate. Very, very exciting way to start out this best of five. Yeah, I mean, proxy Stargates, they can work rather well. But the one downside of going for proxy Stargate type setup is, oh, probe, probe. <laughs> I see he's pulled away. But these are some, wait, 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 wait. No, 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 not allowed. <laughs> uh, we're fine. We're fine. We're okay. Pro SCV runs away. Is, but this is a, he's going for oh, another one. <laughs> <laughs> At least he's not going to get it. I can't. But like, uh, this is three very low SCVs, and the probe is still alive. For I mean, the Reaper's going to kill it, but that is actually pretty significant mining time that has been yeah. lost here to start. And more importantly, I don't think Clem repairs these. So as the as the uh, Oracle flies, and that's going to be three dead SCVs right off the top before we start to see the Oracle have to punch things down. But what is this Ooh, probe going? Is this... that going to be a second proxy? I, he might. Yeah. I mean. I guess the idea here for here is you're proxying the Stargate, of course. You know, that Oracle's going to cross. I think Clem will expect it, obviously, now that he sees there's no expansion. Should have an idea. Okay, something's proxy proxied. Most likely, it's going to be a Stargate. Does Hero then set up a second proxy that, you know, Clem might not be ready for or might not scout for? We'll have to see. This should be an Oracle, though, from Hero. Is going to be sending that into the mineral line. As you said, those low health SCVs, we don't know if Clem has repaired them just yet. But a Cyclone will be out a little bit later than this oracle to help deflect it away with that chrono boost coming down onto the stargate reaper does discover it so clem completely in the know of what's happening uh, hero does eventually place down his own nexus it's slightly behind the command center of the terran but yeah it's all going to depend on how much damage this oracle gets two adepts also on their way over so yeah hero going to be applying quite a bit of pressure here so the oracle is that and i have been paying attention to the mineral line those scvs are not repaired so if Hero finds the way into the mineral line, well, that is three SCVs again off the top. But with Marines in the main base, Cyclones in the main base, uh, it seems like Hero just wants to pull these Oracles. Uh, wait wait until Clem is trying to defend two bases, uh, something like that, because you're not going to be able to get a lot done, right? Uh, if the, if it's just one base Terran, they're just posturing in the main base uh, with Cyclone here as well. So Oracles, uh, does he just stay to trap the natural? Like, I feel like if you just continuously stay to trap the natural, deny the main base, something like that, that really does seem to be a pretty decent way to do it. Yep, there we go. <laughs> stay trap on the natural, and uh, that means, I mean, this command center is not going to go down for at least the next 35 seconds. Yep. Adepts don't complete their shade. I don't think they give any information on the fact that those SCVs haven't been healed up, but it's going to be three oracles for here, as you said, pulling them up now. And... Just, yeah, being really annoying right now as Clem, he's not going to be able to land this command center. So he's going to be stuck on one base while Hero is, of course, chrono boosting out his own probes. As, oh, so close with that Cyclone. Not going to walk oh, in. Oh, SCV's oh, oh. also so close. Oh, the tank goes down. And now SCV's being targeted as Hero. Ooh, bit unfortunate there. Accidentally pulls the SCV into his stasis ward. And now Oracle is going to go down. But four SCV's. On the fadeaway, get a tank as well, and you delay this command center. Oh, and the Oracle survives. I think the big deal there is the fact that this SCV is stasis trapped for just about forever. Really, right as the stasis trap is about to expire. So, I mean, it's five, it's five minutes, Titan, and the natural's not down. I mean, we're, we're there now, but that's the story. Yeah, Oracle's got some SCVs, that's nice, but the story of this game is the fact that we are five minutes in, and only just now is Clem allowed to mine. He is down, what is that, 14 workers? It, the economy of Clem in shambles, he does have to make something happen with this push. And they're, in fairness, it is three stalkers. There's not a lot here on the other side, but uh, Oracles, they're gonna dive in once again, charting down the fresh mule, more SCVs fall, and this Oracle will eventually die. And that means it takes a little longer, but hey, there they go. The low SCVs in the main base. The, Clem's just been uh, 
Hero's just been waiting. He <laughs> understands that it's free whatever he wants. So seven more workers go down. Oracle runs out of energy. Uh, Clem is all in as all in can be, but he needs these tanks to arrive. And with no stim, oh. with the tanks not here, just, okay, don't complete that shade. Hero does, unfortunate. Blink is going to be done pretty soon. No stim here. It really is just about these tanks. And the stalkers are microing very well. But yeah, the shield battery. The tanks, he just, maybe that's an opportunity. Stim goes in. Stalkers oh. on the high ground, though. They got the oh. concave. The tank's out of range. Uh, this still, even with the shield battery go down, this feels very holdable for Hero. Yeah, the shield battery, though, like the fact that you couldn't overcharge that is very unfortunate. But the blink forward onto the tank. The SCVs have been pulled. Hero knows he just needs to hold this. But Clem with the focus fire trying to knock down the stalkers. Now focusing back onto the probes. Hero says, no, I think I just have enough with the Stalkers. Blink backs one. Stalkers blink forward. And with the rest of the Marines going down, I mean, only nine SCVs falling or probes falling is not as much damage as I thought that attack was going to do with the probe pull into it. It felt like it would be so much worse, but no, Hero mitigates the losses. And now he's on three bases. He's also up 10 or 11 workers. And he's in a great position in this game. Oh, I love this as well. He rebuilt oracles. Normally, you just see the oracles. They go and they do whatever they can, and that's just about it. But the Marines, they run in, and uh, there are oh. not enough Marines. Uh, yeah, no, there's actually no anti-air. <laughs> there is yeah. negative anti-air. It's like one Marine on the map right now. Plenty of Marauders, but we're going to see the oracles. They're going to try to kill that tank. Repair oh. is barely going to be enough because only one oracle's worth of damage. But Stalker's playing again. They say, okay, that's fine. Yeah, the oracle is not able to do what it needs to do, but... Stalkers will be able to continue with that job. So Clem loses more money, loses more economy, loses another tank, and the Marine will fight. Well, actually, we're aware of that proxy, but <laughs> Hero is just dominating the map at this point. The pressure from Clem did not get enough. It's 50 war workers to 39. Hero has a third base. He's got well, the one downside, the one deficit he's dealing with. Doesn't have charge, right? That's still a little ways off, still lacking that plus one, but everything else, I mean, it, it's coming up, Hero. Yeah, I mean... Clem is essentially having to turtle up on two bases when you, you're the Protoss is already on three when the Protoss is up now 16 workers additional gateways coming down charge and plus one it is such a dire situation for the Terran constantly getting tagged with these revelations he's going to try and move out now with three tanks but the gateways are going to be ready by the time this comes across the map and it really just does feel like there is not a chance in the world that Clem manages to make this work he's going to need a miracle and I don't know if that's going to be in the books here for this game one. Hero has, I mean, I think chosen the right build and handled it perfectly in order to get himself all the advantages. And now Clem, this is his last chance. He's pulling the boys. He knows it. There's no other shot for him in this game. The SCVs are here. Stasis wards, though, are going to try and close out retreat paths as Clem is walking forward. It's only one medevac, though. He doesn't have a lot of healing for this bio. And love Hero trying to bait the units, but here we go. Shield battery overcharge has popped immediately, and the charge lots are already here. They are ready. They're going to dive on in. The three tanks in the back trying to support. All the SCVs are falling down, but the tanks, the zealots are already on top of them. The bio, it's doing its best, but it's not going to be enough. GG Hero, a convincing game one. In this series, Cosmic Sapphire is what we got, and uh, we're gonna have to see if the player in the blue in the upper left has a cosmic game because he is down one. So folks, in the upper left, in the blue for Team Liquid, his name is Clem. Clem. <laughs> and in the bottom right from Dragon Phoenix Gaming, a great job in that first one. His name is Hero. I mean, certainly, uh, the hero for Protoss is everywhere, working together with the Mac Packs to make sure that no dirty, you know, top, you know, number two and number three player in the world is able to go and uh, make their way out of Group C. <laughs> yeah, you know, we cannot have Zergs in the playoffs. It's unacceptable. There's only one that remains. Is um, I thought people told me the Zerg was overpowered. Yeah, no. Uh, from what I'm seeing, you know, if Clem wins this, we could have three Terrans, and then if Bunny wins, I mean, Bale, if we go full hypothetical, we could have four Terrans in the semifinals, and then. I don't know what everyone's talking about. I think Terran's actually overpowered. I mean, honestly, that shades of what was it? King of Battles one. I think they had four Terrans or in the <laughs> top four. Yeah. Um, just Alpha X uh, events, you know, just get yeah. a lot of Terrans. It works out. Yeah. I mean, obviously, I think Hero and Max Pax. Um, a lot of players are very happy that they ended up eliminating Rainer and Serral because when we were doing interviews with the group beforehand, obviously, a lot of the worries were, hey, you know, I just really don't want to face. Serral after I advance a lot of people were expecting him to make it out but hero ends up denying that in 
the uh, in that deciding match. And now, Hero, he says, no, I'm not going to play a standard game. I know it's Cosmic Sapphire and it's a long map, but I don't care. Here's the proxy pile on going down once again. Will it be a Stargate? Will it be a Robotics Bay? Will it be... No, it's, it's, it's a Stargate. <laughs> and I mean, this makes a lot of sense. Uh, it certainly worked out very well for Hero in game one. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Uh, the big difference though, Clem, not actually moving out of the map here with this Reaper, wants to make sure he can deny the scout of Hero, but as useful as that is, first of all, Hero's gonna be able to see that there is a natural here, so that's really not denying much of a scout. It probably doesn't get the main base, but it's not, not denying much of a scout. He sees the Reaper, sees the Marine, doesn't really see much on the other side. The, I, it just, this just means that Clem does not get the scout that he needs to see that, well, there's really not a natural uh, doesn't see the gas count, so he's not really going to have a good idea of or whether this is going to be some semblance of a proxy Stargate or not. Yeah, and, and interestingly enough, Clem, that SCV is actually kind of standing. Oh, Adept is going in here. This gets very, very low. This is very risky. Hero, what? Loses the Zealot and the Adept. That is very just clumsy there from Hero, but... Interesting enough for Clem, he's hiding that SCV there by the gold base in the bottom left. Now, I think we'll send that SCV back, SCV back up to scout, but could be interesting if that gold base comes into play. As now the Oracle is here and it's very quick. Clem now knows that this was Proxy already has Missile Turret on the way, does not finish up as now going to the main. Missile Turret is also there. Adept trying its best to be annoying, but I mean, Clem only lost two workers. Honestly, feels like he's held very, very well. Oh, well, Adept shades in as well, and I, it's gonna be another dead Adept. As clean as game one was for Hero, game two is, uh, he's been wallowing in the mud a little bit. This is a lot dirtier, but he does have double Oracle. He's got a third one on the way. The problem though, is he, he's lost two Adepts. Hero loves to play this style. Where he gets three Oracles, three Adepts. That's enough to one-shot SCVs, enough to one-shot Marines, things like that. Runs the Adepts in the natural, runs the Adepts in the main base, and says, hi, Terran player, defend both locations at once, please, thank you. But because he's lost those adepts, he doesn't really, he's not really able to do that as much anymore. And certainly, I mean, hey, getting a Reaper is nice, but now we're in a game where Hero and Club have the same amount of workers. And if we talk about TVP, when a Terran has mules, that is not, <laughs> that's not what you're looking for if you're Hero. Oh my God, Hero just diving on in, but he's not even gonna get the Cyclone. Loses an Oracle for his trouble, is gonna try and snipe up a few more SCVs. Not exactly the most worthwhile trade there for Hero. And that's kind of been the story of this game. I think Hero's been trying really hard to keep, you know, coming back at home to try and find damage and find a, an opening, but it has been fairly rock solid here from Clem. He's only lost four workers. He's killed an Oracle. He's killed two Adepts and a Zealot. Yeah, Clem's pretty happy with this position, it feels like. Now, the interesting thing, of course, uh, Hero built a fourth Oracle, and yes, Yes, three oracles are the magic number to kill a lot of a lot of Terran stuff, but I oh he's building a fourth. Yeah. He's going for oracle. Okay, yeah. interesting. Uh, this is not even something we saw last game when he was ahead. So it seems like the algorithm of Hero says, yeah, if I'm behind, I just got to build a lot of oracles and that'll work out. I, I don't know, drop stasis traps it, literally everywhere. As Clem now goes to the bottom side, again, tries to see whether Hero is actually proxying that gold because Zergs, or not Zergs, wow. Protoss players love to try to take the gold bases on this map and on Stargazers. Uh, if it's it scouted, it doesn't work out, but it, mm -hmm. well. Hero's not going for it. He's got his third base. Clem doesn't get the scout on that one. Oh, and, oh my God. Oh, unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> do we go charge? Do we just go straight charge this game for for Hero? I don't know that going blink is going to give him enough time to make this hold happen. Yeah, I mean, this push out is so deadly. And the, the four oracles, that there is a lot of power there in the ability to just burst down Cyclones and Marines. So that is the one saving grace here for Hero. But mind you, he's down 12. Supply stasis sword has been built. I think Clem saw it. No, he didn't. A lot of Marines getting trapped. And now the oracles, they can walk forward as the Cyclone lock-ons come through. Looks like Hero doesn't want to try and engage the second half of that army just yet. Now he's going to walk forward with the shields full. No. A little bit indecisive here on when he wants to take this fight. I mean, yeah, Blink is on the way. And as you said, I don't know if Blink is going to be the right call just because that's an upgrade. Here we go. Hero's taking it, but immediately the Oracle is focused down. Because the whole army's here. Stim back from Clem, and he's just going to regroup. So the calculus there is the fact that, yes, uh, the entire army is now out of stasis, which is, is nice. I mean, Clem's going to try to take that fight. 
Oh, there we go. There's the stasis trap. Uh, but Hero could fight shield battery over charge range. So unfortunately, the Oracles, they stepped a little bit too far forward. Losing that one is... There we go. We will have another, another revelation. This third base, though, will be denied. Oh, uh, there we go. Okay, third base will be denied very quickly. And uh, Cyclone gets a lock on as well. But Oracle scares it away. <laughs> Actually, it's a very low Cyclone. Nice little lock on there. And the lack of high ground vision means the Oracle gets that anyways. Hero, again, a little bit, a little bit dirty, a little bit sloppy in his micro early on. But it is starting to warm up a little bit more as this game continues. Yeah, Oracle's got to be careful. Clem is keeping on the pressure. 106 supply now for the Terran. A few of these units getting picked off. Ooh, Oracle gets low. Scan goes down to try and snipe the second one. The Stasis Ward is triggered as now Hero trying to take the fight straight up here with the Stalkers. Has to pop the overcharge and Clem is just going to back up and wait out the cooldown of that ability. And Clem, ooh, not able to quite snipe that Stalker on the retreat back. But right now for Hero, he's on three bases building Immortals because he needs something here to help with his defense. His plus one is not done. His blink is not done. The Oracles are waiting by the side. It's a decent concave here from the Protoss, but I mean, Clem's just diving on in as the Oracles fall immediately. The Immortal pops out, but there's no more shield battery energy left. And it feels like Clem has just closed out game number two. GG. What a game from Clem tying us up. In the bottom left hand corner of Data C. It's his map pick. He's tied it up 1 1. You see how good he is at the defense when he's able to prepare for Team Liquid. It's Clem. And they have a right in the red. Trying to go up two games to one. He is for DPG. It is Hero. And Titan, you know, Hero has to win this tournament because remember, looking back at his interview after GSL season two, you know, he goes up and says, you know, I need to win so many tournaments that my wife is not emotional about me winning them anymore. <laughs> well, he hasn't won a tournament since he won the GSL. So, you know, we, we need to start. We, he needs to win this one. This is for the good of his wife, the good, yeah. of, the good of his, you know, his, uh, his family at home. He's got to win this series, at the very least. Yeah, I mean, I think he wins. He wins this tournament. Then he goes on. He wins Atlanta, and then IEM Katowice. And you know, everyone's like, "This, it's, it's the second coming of Protoss that we have all been waiting for for so long." Uh, but yeah, I, I think Hero, he really has been the first Protoss. I mean, wait, how long is it? He was the first Protoss in eight years to win a GSL. I think it was five years, but yeah, it was a long time. We yeah. had. Tons and tons and uh, if you look at uh, number of pro number like the race distribution in top two, mm. it's actually I think it's a little bit Protoss favored. Yeah, but they just never win the finals for whatever reason until Hero goes in and uh, actually played an incredible series against Maru. Is uh, what's this uh, CV doing? I mean, it is one base, but everything's back at home. So I don't. Th I think we're just enjoying the. Uh, I think Observer or Observer is just trying to show us the nice fancy jetpack on the SCV, and it is a nice fancy jetpack. No, oh, yeah. I mean, top of the tier uh, Dominion technology right there. Absolutely. just. I mean, it is a little bit outclassed by the Reaper jetpack, but, you know, what can you do? Uh, but, yeah, I mean, for the longest time, it really did feel like Protoss in the finals kind of had the same curse that Sue did, where it was just like, I don't know, they always got there, but then the Protoss would never never quite be able to close it out. There was so many times, I mean, where Trap got to the finals of big tournaments and didn't... Uh, wasn't able to win. But yeah, Hero was able to break that curse for GSL, and you know, maybe he can break it for other tournaments as well, as this Reaper just trying to get as much information as possible. He's going to be denied there by the wall. And we get a robotics facility. So I think we, we might be looking towards, as I was expecting, something more akin to a three-gate blink stalker with that Nexus, and then going into the Colossus, a much more standard and safe opening here from Hero. I mean, that makes sense, right? You, you, you proxy Stargate, it works really well game one. Game two, Clem shows that he can, in fact, hold it and run across the map and kill you. So for now, at the very least, you do something a little bit different. But you talk about this being 3-8 blink. We see additional gateways on the way. We do not see that Twilight Council. A uh, hero has been doing some things like this where he just goes and gets a, a warp prism and uh, gets aggressive with a couple gateway units and gets his tech behind it. It's higher tempo early on and you know go for a four stalker hit squad something like that Ooh. but that's three reaper two hellion pressure this can kill the stalker it does have to run away 
A hero, he does oh. have two more stalkers behind. One one actually stalker will fall, and now Reaper's Hellion is trying to dive on top of things. Second Looking at that one. second stalker. It is, in fact, going to go down, and now this is still a lot of probe pressure here. Probes have to get oh. pulled. Reaper will fall. Oh. oh, the Hellions, they need to get two shots, and they will. Five, six workers will go down. Unexpected high tempo, high octane play coming in from Clem, and it is paying out. It is paying massive dividends. Seven workers go down. That is, <laughs> Hero was not expecting that. And, 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 Clem gets the scout on the robo on the additional gateways. Yeah, I mean, we, we've seen a few Terrans. They've been experimenting and they've been starting to use this this three Reaper, two Hellion opening in, in Protoss versus Terran. They've said, yeah, actually, you can get a lot of pressure with this. You can find some early game damage and it transitions fairly well into your three rack setup for the follow up. So. Yeah, I mean, you just see there how effective it can be if the Protoss is not ready. If you catch a unit out, they do a lot of damage. I know it doesn't seem like it when you just have one Reaper, but when you have three, yeah, it stacks up. As now we have the Stalkers moving out. Now, mind you, they don't have Blink. This is Blinkless from Hero. This is just going to be four Stalkers in a Warp Prism. They are going to attempt to at least one shot a few of these SCVs. As Hero does get the full scout here with his Observer. Going to see the Stim Pack. Going to see the Combat Shields on that second Barracks. Starport just now coming down for Clem. It is a little bit delayed because, of course, with the opening that he did, you're not going to have the gas necessarily for that Starport as quickly. Uh, certainly not. So now Stalkers in the natural. There are four of them. They one-shot SCVs, but a hero's got to get a lot to make this happen. So three workers will fall to start. He's going to get... I, I mean, this is starting to get pretty nice here. Four workers go down with really not even taking damage on the Stalkers until right now. And Hero backs up. Doesn't even feel the need that needs to pick things up for the moment, but he will, so... Four workers, they're dead, and it's starting to be something. I mean, the number we're looking for is seven to let, quote unquote equalize, but it's, it's never just like that, right? You gotta kill more later on because it's you won that higher percentage, but charge on the way, high Templar on the way. How many gas? Yeah, we're on four gas, so we're gonna be charged a lot of storm after this. Uh, Hero playing a very different game compared to game, compared to game one. Yeah, I mean, it's just really changed it up and as now we're going to be looking at what this build is for Clem. As we kind of said, the, it's the stim, it's the combat shields, three racks. You're going to be looking to move out. I mean, ideally you would be moving out at 6 minutes 45 seconds with the plus one. But again, with the opening, the gas is not afforded for that upgrade. As uh oh, Cyclone gets a little bit too far forward, is going to be knocked down. And yeah, Clem going to look for the move out now. Is putting down the third command center behind it, so it's not super committed on two bases, but... It's going to be dangerous to push out here. Now, there's not a lot of splash damage for Hero just yet. I think did just warp in a few high Templar. I don't believe... Did he research Storm yet? Okay, so we haven't seen... I don't think we've... I don't think we saw a Storm. But he, he's got the high Templar in the... War, I mean, he's go, is he going for feedback? I, I don't think he has Storm. Yeah, here we go. Feedback on the Medivac. But he, he double feedbacks that one Medivac. And while well, the other one still has plenty of energy. So interesting idea but they're just gonna have to more of them do an arc on here but there we go that's the feedback on the medevac kind of cool idea here from hero as now we great force fields actually oh the zealots are not here just yet tank actually there we go war prism gets targeted down immediately but this tank is gonna fall very very quickly so with no healing this army has to run away and that was that i thought this was just gonna be for storm and we're going out of six gas so you gotta figure storm's gonna be uh something a component of this army soon enough but that was really cool there from hero yeah it was really cool a bit I mean, a bit unfortunate that he just warps in in front of Clem's army and Clem focuses it down very, very well. Just a mistake there from Hero, but he manages to clean up the tank very quickly afterwards, chase down the rest of the army. Clem now going up to five racks. We'll have his plus one done very shortly, and it'll be it'll be before the storm is finished for Hero. That does just mean you're going to have that extra power here for Clem's army if he decides to continue to be aggressive. But right now, just trying to chase down this zeal these zealots, clean up the vision, stop the potential run buys as he's preparing for the next, excuse me, the next stage of this aggression. Well, certainly Hero has his side of the map locked down. Storm, where I don't think we're going to have that timing where plus one. I mean, yes, we have that timing. I don't think Clem's going to take advantage of that timing where Clem has plus one. Hero doesn't. Hero does not have Storm. His storm is done in 10 seconds. So the next thing we're looking at is how does uh, Hero get his fourth base? Because he certainly he's got himself locked down. He's up about 11 workers. His economy is great. But the Terran does have his third. The Terran does have triple mules. So we do want to see the Protoss go and start to get that fourth base, start to develop themselves in the mid game. Or there's the other side of it where Hero warps in a bunch of stalkers here and he's the one that's going to try to get aggressive on this third base 
of the Terran player. And well, the Widowmine is not going to hold this position down. So how much damage can Hero get? He's got Storm. One goes oh. down. Second one, but no Clem. His splits are actually incredible here. It does not get much of his army whatsoever. Third base still under fire. Archons have to warp in and still the Archons have to run away. Or the SCVs have to run away. But those splits from Clem were incredible despite that. He's going to lose this third base. It's now starting to... No, not burning just no, yet. No, it should no, it go down. Is, oh. Okay, that's the problem. It's, I mean, it's just now. barely alive. The repair comes through. Hero's still trying to push it through. I mean, the SCVs are pulled. 15 go down. But behind this, guess what? There was a drop and the recall. A few units get sniped. Look at the Widow Mines. They got, I mean, 13 probes in the back of this. And that is the one saving grace here for Clem is that he did find some return damage. Well, that he kept that third base alive as well. I mean, it got down to like 5 HP. Just <laughs> barely staying alive. But... Now there are not a lot of bank storms. You know, mm -hmm. we, we don't have this powerful composition that we were looking at where, well, you can storm everything. And again, I got to point out, Clem's micro, Clem splits against those storms. Only the reason he's still in that game. He could have lost so much more. And Hero did mm -hmm. not have a fourth base behind this. So you lose 13 probes. You go, you don't have a fourth base. Clem is absolutely into this game. Yeah, no. Clem's... He's really, he's he's in a fine spot right now. The fact that he is able to keep so much alive there. Sure, he loses some, some SCVs and that hurts, but it, it's not enough to separately put this game into a disastrous downward spiral. And, and that means that, you know, Bale, we're going to get that uh, mid-game TVP that we were, were thinking we might get as Blink forward, snipe off the Medivacs and the Viking. Very nicely done there by Hero. Going to get rid of some of that healing. And now this army is a little bit segmented. Hero blinking forward again, trying to dive on forward as it unleashed the storms just yet. Now dropping them down, but the EMPs are good. One more storm on it. So much of the bio. As now the Archons are walking forward. No more EMPs have been used just yet. Still a lot of shields on those Archons. The EMP goes out, but still there's so much here for Hero as he blinks forward again. And it's just really that one storm finally connecting as the Archons just shred through the SCVs. And they go back in just to get killed. 15 SCVs fall. And this is finally the damage that might just tip it over the edge for Hero. He's blinking forward. He's warping in. GG. Hero catches Clem just slightly out of position. And that's all that he needs. But now as we head on to Tropical Sacrifice. This again, it's a, it's a larger map. This is one where, I don't know. I mean, we've seen we've seen Hero now. He's, swi he's switched it up. He, he's not doing that proxy Stargate, you know, every single game. He went for just the standard stalker opening, and while the early game wasn't good, the transition was very, very solid. You know, are we going to see any changes for either of these players, or you know, do they just play it straight up again? I feel like Clem, he's definitely the player with the confidence, and I think duly so, where he just says, yeah, I lost that last game, but I think if we are in the same situation again, you know, I think 50% of the time I could probably win that, so I don't mind doing it again. Yeah, 50% of the time, it works every time. Something like that. Uh, but for now, I mean, whatever he wants to go for, whether it's the same build that you were talking about or not, whether it's something else. I mean, well, we're moving into the mid game. I'm actually really curious to see whether Hero goes for the the quick robo three gate drop play that we saw him go for in that previous game. Now, obviously, it was punished pretty hard by what Clem tried to do. Uh, he just wasn't ready for it. And you would think three stocks would be enough, but not in the proper position. But no. Okay, Stargate's going to be on the way, so no weird robo drop play. And uh, this time, though, hey, uh, Titan, the Stargate's in the main base. It's not a proxy. <laughs> uh, yes, it's something new here from Hero, but this doesn't just mean it's going to be a slower Oracle. It's going to be one that's just probably, I mean, I could imagine this just being one Oracle, and then you just look to transition. Um, we'll, we'll see what Hero's plan ends up being for this game, Tropical, tropical Sacrifice. Um, of course, one of the, I think, the main advantages of this map is the fact that third base, a lot of the ways you have to attack into it are is the high ground. Unless, of course, you are coming from the, the your opponent's fourth base, and that's the angle you're attacking from as these adepts. Trying to be aggressive, and of course, they have the leverage. Two, three shots from them will kill the Marines. Marines can't really stand up to that as Hero. Yeah, just going to shade on forward. It's a bit dangerous, though. The DPS for the Marines is quite high. Hero not splitting his shots up on that final one. I mean that one adept goes down, but you're gonna trade out one adept here for looks like three marines. Is decently worthwhile as the second adept goes down, but with that trade completing, doesn't feel the best. 
No, uh, no, not really. But if he can knock down some of these Hellions, maybe that's going to be worthwhile. And Oracle dives in. Actually, there was a lot of value to knocking those Marines down because there is not a lot of anti-air anymore. Widow Mines are about to pop out. And then we hear them burrow hiding. That's not a good spot to hide. So it's really not going to prevent... Uh, well, actually, wait. Whoa. It is a good spot to hide. Never mind. Oracle is dead. I was... It was obvious, but sometimes the best positions to hide your Widow Mines are the most obvious positions. So six Marines and a Hellion for an Oracle and two Adepts. But there is another uh, there is another Oracle on the way. Maybe that finds something. Clum, though, feels unlocked on the map now. He's got Widow Mine drop on the other side, but look at this. Phoenix play behind this. As, oh, no, no, Hero, not again. <laughs> oh, you see the shake of Hero's head. He knows that that's bad. Oh, two Oracles going down. I mean, Clem just knowing exactly where those Oracles want to go. It's the Burrows. Now the Widow Mine's going to try and find their way on in. And the Adepts are here. The Phoenix not quite out just yet as the Burrows going to come through. Deny onto that first Widow Mine. Not there. Unbro here from Clem trying to buy as much time as possible. Should just get the two. And that is going to be all as the other Widow Mine. Looks like it's going to be denied there with the pickups. Azo. Adepts. We're going to see what they can do in the natural. But again, the Widow Mine. The positioning is very good here from Clem. And with, with three adepts, you actually can fight things. You, you can one-shot Marines. So this is actually a fairly decent fight. But as the Cyclone mm -hmm. arrives, uh, yeah, this is just not going to work out. Uh, this is... I'm not trying to put this entire series down to ping because it is absolutely more than that. But it's interesting to me that in games one and three, Hero has looked so clean. And in mm -hmm. games two and four, he has looked very much not clean. Like, he just, we're just seeing him make micro mistakes that you would not normally expect to see him make as the depth now the shade into the mineral line. But the hug of death is there. The citizen's arrest, indeed. He gets like one SCV, but that's not even worth it. And now here comes the pressure from Clem, where it feels like once again, Hero has not gotten enough damage done. And he's just throwing units away. He's trading inefficiently on the hopes that he makes something happen, but things are just not happening. Yeah, and I, I definitely feel like also you have to consider the style that Hero is trying to play in these games where he is playing this very aggressive style, constant pressure, constant attacks making their way in. It, it is a style that, hey, if you're slightly off in one game, it's not going to look good. It's not going to work out as well as you would like, because now the Phoenix are going to make their way into this mineral line, start to knock down some of these SCVs, and do a good job of it as five of them go down. They manage to get out before the Vikings really find any significant damage. So there's finally something coming through here for Hero. He's up 12 workers at this point, which is good, but he doesn't have Blink. He doesn't have plus one. Those upgrades just started, and his third base is already almost done. I, I mean, there's that at the very least, but I'm just worried about this push from Clem. You know, he's, as I, I say I'm worried about the push from Clem, we're a minute and a half, we're a minute, minute and a half out from Clem actually getting aggressive here. It feels like this game is actually more developed than it is. As one of mine, man, Clem is hiding these one of mine. He's getting so much damage done with these one of mine. The stalkers, they're not even able to kill it off. And, Actually, there was a second one there. So luckily the Phoenix dodged that one at the very least. But this pressure, again, Hero, you talked about it. Hero doesn't have Blink. He can move out as much as he wants, but he can't really be active on the, he can't really be as active as he would like. I don't think we're gonna have the scenario where say Concussive is done before Blink is, but even still, I, this is, this is hard for Cure to do what he wants. And now we're seeing Liberators get damaged on the map when this is Phoenix from Hero, which is just never supposed to happen. So now here comes Clem. 12 seconds remain until I mean, he's going to be ready there right around that 7.30 timing. Oh. And with Blink not being done, uh, this again feels really hard for Hero to hold. He's down 22 army supply. Yeah. Has the Phoenix, so of course they can lift up the tanks, they can lift up the Cyclones, they can try and find their value there. Blink now just finish up, but one, plus one. If Hero is able to get plus one, and it has that finished before Clem's, then suddenly he can turn this. That is a very big upgrade for Hero to have at this moment, because it's a two base Clem. You know, this that third command center, it's not on look. There's not even a third command center, I don't think. You know, this is very all in here from Clem. And so the plus one now finishing up. Hero is going to try and take the fight. The Widow Mine onto the Phoenix. The liftoff on the tank. One of them goes down. The second tank is still alive as the Colossus has been hallucinated, but the bio is just so strong here as more and more stalkers are being warped in. But there's still so many Marines for Clem available. Hero. Still keeping up 100 supply, but the Marines stepping forward. The probes need to be pulled. The probes are going into the Shredder, and I think Clem has done it. This looks like it's going to head towards a Game 5. There's just no additional tools to help deal with this bio. There's no splash damage. And when there's no splash damage, well, bio units reign supreme for the Terror in the top of the ramp. Ooh, good force fields, but I think Clem can just force this through. I mean, even with the losses he had, the units are going down. And Bayo. 
Looks like we got a game five on our hands. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Hero tries to hold on top of the ramp, but no shield battery overcharge means it, it all goes down. Where do we go, though? In this map five, it's Moon Dance, it's really short. Again, I don't want to see Stargate play. It doesn't feel like that is working. But where, where does Clem go from here? For right now, eBay block to start because this is just a Clem thing and he's decided to be a jerk about it. But, uh, well, where do we go from here? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I like this from Clem. You just try and slow down the Protoss. He hasn't done this all series long. And so Hero, not necessarily expect It's, oh, interesting. Hero just takes the uh, pocket. Now, the pocket expansion on this map is one that is it's not the worst to take as your natural expansion the one issue is it has two less mineral patches and one less gas geyser and so you're not going to have as efficient of mining for hero you're going to have just a little bit less income so that's why i think it's a little bit surprising but he scouted out the engineering base so late that i think he'd rather take that than taking one of the third base locations which becomes much more exposed to something like hellion run buys yeah, i'll buy that um the other thing, of course, I mean, you're talking about this. I'm, I'm somewhat surprised to see that the Nexus just not taken at the forward position because honestly, yeah, you're maybe a little safer from Hellion run buys at the backside, but I'm not sure it makes up for the economic disadvantage, especially when we're talking about, well, you know, TVP where mules are just so dominant. But I guess if you're a hero and you're going to try to play into a quick three base play anyways, not quite as bad, right? Because you're still going to have some level of an economic advantage despite that one is a uh, I never really noticed that. The uh, the pattern on the natural ramp as we're going away from it kind of looks like a bear. You know, it's got the mm. mouth down below and you see the two eyes looks like a like Inuit uh, art style like uh, yeah. bear. I like it. I like it. I did not notice that before, but yeah, very cool. There's a lot of little fun Easter eggs on these maps, you know. The the tile sets, they're always... I always am surprised that there's always new tile sets. I'm like, wait, really? There's another one? But yeah. There's, there's a lot of them. There's very, they're very, very interesting. As Hero, Shade there, not really going to be able to find that much information. Just the four or five Marines here for Clem, who is taking a, a later command center, because behind this, he has gone for the factory first once again. And we mentioned at the start of the series, uh, it's kind of been the MO for Clem of getting this fast Cyclone. I think that's really been an interesting dichotomy, is the fact that the fast factory from Clem has been what's allowing him to deny this pressure from Hero so well. I think if you're looking at a Terran who goes for CC after barracks, then suddenly all this pressure that Hero is doing looks a lot more deadly. Yeah, but for, I mean, for right now, here comes that pressure from Clem. Although, the interesting thing about this, by taking that, that position, you know, back at the third base, it feels really scary for Clem to commit to this because, I mean, every time, if he goes and tries to put pressure on the natural, well, he, he's going to lose the army if he doesn't win the game. So that's kind of a nice setup almost for Hero, despite the fact that, you know, again, he's, he's not mining efficiently, but of course, Clem's natural is a little bit lower as Clem tries to win on the line of sight blocker, but here goes the other one. Cyclones get good lock-ons, but hey, there we go again, line of sight blocker. So Hero has been very effective with these stalkers yeah. in the middle of the map, and well... Yeah, Blink should be done, but we have a Warp Prism on the way. What are we at? Is this 3-gate? Is that a 4th? Yeah, he's adding That's on. He's gateway. going on a 4-gate here. Yeah. So, Hero, very aggressive, Game 5. Yeah, you like to see it. And I gotta say, Hero, he had that kind of instinct on that Vision Blocker that we noticed. And now he's gonna look to try and apply some pressure. He hasn't lost any Stalkers this early game, which is very important to notice. Here we go. Warp is gonna come through. Three more Stalkers being warped in. There's gonna be a lot of pressure available here for Hero. And he's gonna have to try and make it work. There will be a third base behind this. But that's not going to be the main plan. The main plan is to find significant damage. There's a tank already out. There's two Cyclones again. This is the power of this opening here. As the Blink forward onto the Cyclone. Pickups come through. And Hero, already a great start to this pressure. Snipes off a Cyclone. And it doesn't look like he's going to lose anything in return. He did lose one Stalker. But there is no Bunker for Clem. So not a lot for these Marines to fight into. Unfortunately, Hero, he blinks. He gets the Cyclone. That's nice. But he did not see the tank, I guess. Or was not able to get quite far enough forward. But... Ooh, this, this is a pretty vulnerable tank here, but Stalkers, they're just going to blink right on past and find themselves back into the backside of the mineral line. And, well, this means he's fighting outside oh. of tank range. There is no oh. stim. Actually, the stim is very exposed, and he's just going to target it right on down, blinking away again from the tank range. But you got to be careful because behind the mineral line here, hug of death from those SCVs is rather nice. Only four workers have fallen down thus far, but, hey, blink out backwards once again. Cyclone gets another Stalker, but Hero now 
warping in more stalkers on the backside and the timing now where he can be active even longer stalkers please just blink on the high ground oh no, they're gonna blink on the lower one he no the hero go down and hero loses almost every single he still has four right that's enough to one shot scvs but it takes a while to unload and the cyclone gets a good lock on there on the warp prism it will not go down cyclone no oh it goes down but the warp prism actually dies at the end of the day hero loses he's down 30 yes he's denied stim but he's down 30 supply he's five army supply on the map right now he's equal on economy this is a disaster for our korean protoss dark shrine immediately goes down hero knows that he said he banked everything on that pressure and he was not able to micro it well enough the tank surviving on just barely any hp the cyclone barely surviving and knocking down the warp prism it is just disastrous here for hero now he's still down 13 to 45 supply he's going to try and delay as much as he can here with the stalkers but this is just i mean it's three tanks i don't know if hero can do it this is worst case scenario right now for the protoss and clem looking to make it so far in all Terran semifinals, as he's just gonna snipe down the shield battery and hero. I mean, just such a disastrous last game.